I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching from GIS to Remote Sensing. This is the quick start of Remote Your Census. Remote Your Census is a Python package that allows for the processing of remote sensing images and GIS data. In this tutorial, which is a, a Jupyter uh, notebook, in particular we are going to use a Google Colab service, uh, which is uh, a very convenient and free uh, tool for running uh, Python and also other libraries through a web interface. So uh, this is the introduction of Remote Your Census. So we are going to describe uh, first how to install a Remote Your Census in Google Colab, uh, the dependencies, uh, NumPy, SciPy, JDAL, and also PyTorch uh, are already installed in Google Colab. So we just need to install Remote Your Census with this command. So we click this play button here to run the function and to install Remote Your Census in Google Colab. So after a few seconds, the Python package is downloaded and installed in Google Colab, and we can start a session of Remote Your Census, which is the first step to use uh, the tools, uh, remote sensing tools available in Remote Your Census. A session of Remote Your Census uh, starts uh, basically the tools, the multiprocessing tools for parallel processing, and also creates a temporary directory where temporary files are stored and are automatically removed after the closing of the session. Uh, in particular, arguments of uh, the remote or census session are and processes, which are the number of processes, and available RAM, which is the available RAM uh, to the processes during uh, the calculations. So uh, the commands are import remote or census and then this uh, second command remote or census dot session with the parameters and processes and available RAM adapted to Google Colab. And of course these parameters depend on the uh, computer. This way we create a session that we call RS in this uh, tutorial and for instance, we can check the number of parallel processes and the path of the temporary directory with this uh, command rs.configurations.nprocesses and the temporary directory path with the rs.configurations.temp.dir. And as you can see here, we have printed the number of processes and the temporary directory path. And of course, the number of processes and available RAM uh, influences the time of uh, processing and of calculation. Of course, the more is the number of processes and, and available RAM, the faster will be the calculation. So here we can see uh, a brief scheme about uh, how uh, Remote Your Census manages uh, raster bands. So basically, band sets are uh, one way uh, to create an input for the tools of remote or census. Uh, basically, uh, we create a band set catalog, which is uh, a catalog of band sets, uh, where each band set is a set of single bands. Each band is a raster file, uh, which has uh, several parameters and several uh, variables, such as the band number, the path of the file, the name of the raster, the center wavelength of the band, and the several parameters that are useful to identify the bands in a band set, which of course uh, will be uh, useful later in other tools, uh, such as uh, the calculation of principal component analysis or classification or band calculation. So each band belongs to a band set and each band set belongs to a Benset catalog. So first we need to create a Benset catalog we'll, which will store and manage all the Bensets with this command rs.bensetcatalog. So we click run. Also we can define a working directory just for this tutorial here. The next code is for downloading just a sample of Copernicus Sentinel-2 data. Uh, other tutorials will describe uh, also how to download and process uh, Sentinel images and other satellite images. But in this particular uh, quick start tutorial, we are just using this function rs.downloadproducts.search 
with these parameters, so products, Sentinel-2, with a uh, range of dates defined with date from and date to, and also we can define the maximum cloud cover and, and also the number of results uh, of the query. And in particular, we are going to define the name filter to select a, a particular tile, Sentinel-2 tile. The result of the query uh, will be a table of products, as you can see here, uh, qu query.extra and product table parameter. In particular, this query uh, is a NumPy recurry, and which we can uh, filter uh, using these parameters just to select the first image in the result, and then use uh, this uh, other command, rs.downloadproducts.download, to download all these bands in this band list, so band number two, three, four, and eight, from the result of the query, in particular the image table that we have defined here. So after we click run, we just wait a few minutes for the download process. So uh, the result uh, of the download is this uh, variable Sentinel2, uh, which is an object uh, with this uh, parameter paths uh, that we can use to uh, print uh, the path of the downloaded Sentinel images, as you can see here. So now we can create a band set. A uh, band set is defined through a path list, uh, in, the, uh, in particular these uh, variable paths, and we can use the paths of the Sentinel-2 images that we have just downloaded as input. And we can also define the band set number. So this is the first band set, so band set number one. Now that we have created uh, the first band set, we can print uh, the number of band set in the catalog with this command, get band set count. And as you can see here, we have just one band set in the catalog. Of course, we can create uh, multiple band sets. We can also define an image date and the center wavelength for the bands. The, the function also accepts uh, the variable, uh, such as uh, uh, the name of the satellite sensor, such as Landsat 8, Landsat 9, Sentinel-2, to define automatically the center wavelength of the bands. So here, an, an example, we can create a band set in the catalog uh, defining the wavelength, uh, the center wavelength through this variable uh, Sentinel-2, as you can see here. And we can also define the date of the image, of the acquisition date. And also with the uh, argument insert equal true, uh, basically, we are going to uh, define a band set uh, at the um, specific position defined in band set number. We can now print a band set count and we can see that now we have two band sets. We can get uh, the band set object from the catalog by the number thereof. Uh, so with this function catalog get band set one, we can get the first band set of the catalog, as you can see here. So now let's have a look uh, at bands. Uh, basically, each band uh, is, of course, a file. And in particular, we can get the list of file path and center wavelength of all the bands using uh, these functions, get absolute paths, and get wavelengths. So these functions uh, belong to the band set object. If we click Run, we can see here that we have printed the file paths of the band set and the center wavelength of each band as a list. Also, it is possible to get bands directly from the bandset catalog. In particular, a band is a NumPy record, uh, which includes several fields uh, that describe the characteristics and the properties of the band. For instance, we can get the red band from the exact value of the attribute center wavelength with this function get bandset bands by attribute. So the Parameters for this function are the band set number, in this case one, the attribute name, in this case wavelength, 
and the attribute value that we are looking for, uh, which is in the center wavelength for the red band. We can print here all the attributes of the red band. We click run, and we can see here the file path, the file name, and the center wavelength that, of course, matches uh, our query. The wavelength unit, we can see here the acquisition date, and for instance, uh, the pixel uh, X and Y uh, sites, and of course, uh, the reference system, the coordinate reference system. We can also select uh, a band that is uh, the nearest center wavelength to a value. In particular, using this function get band by wavelength, with this parameter wavelength, uh, for instance, uh, 0.8, uh, which is the near infrared band. And if we run, we can see that we uh, can print the near infrared band that we have selected. In particular, this is the band number four of this band set. And we can see here all the attributes of this band. So now that we have created uh, a band set and we have defined uh, several bands in this band set, we can use this band set for uh, calculation. For instance, we can calculate the NDVI. Uh, so we are going to perform a calculation uh, with uh, the tools of remote or census. In particular, uh, the calculation is performed by parallel processes and a new raster is created as output file. We can perform the calculation using a custom expression string, and in particular, we are going to perform the NDVI calculation with the argument input raster list and input name list, which define the path and the variable names for the calculation. And the expression string, of course, must uh, include uh, inside quotes uh, the, the variables defined in input name list. So the tool for uh, mathematical calculation in the remote or census is called bandcalc, as you can see here. So this function accepts this parameter input raster list, which is a list of uh, input files. In particular, we are going to use the path of the near infrared band and red band that we have just found. And the input name list uh, are uh, variable names that we can define according to uh, our need. And of course, it must be uh, the same number as the input raster list. In the expression string, we must use the same variables defined in input name list inside quotes. And here you can see the expression for the NDVI calculation, near infrared minus red, divided near infrared plus red. And the output path, which is basically the path to the output file. So if we click run, the process starts, and we can see that uh, parallel processes are performed. So let's see how this is uh, calculated in remote or census. Basically, define uh, the number of processes uh, in, in the session describes the uh, pieces, uh, the number of pieces in which the input raster is divided. Uh, for each piece uh, is uh, assigned to a single process, and each process uh, performs the calculation of this uh, single piece that is assigned, and depending on available RAM, uh, each single piece could be also uh, further divided into sections in order to fit into the available RAM, and each section is uh, processed separately by a single process. And in the end, uh, each process uh, performs the calculation of all the sections, all the sections that are assigned. And uh, at the end of the calculation, all these sections are merged together to create uh, uh, the final output raster that, of course, uh, covers the entire input uh, raster file. So we have performed the NDVI calculation, defined the variables, names, uh, and the input file path. But we can also uh, use uh, band name alias, in particular because we have defined a band set. And we can uh, use the band name alias for the near infrared band with these uh, uh, parameters 
dash uh, n i r dash and red for the red band uh, which has the same pattern uh, dash red dash inside quotes these are band name alias that we can use uh, for the calculation uh, using a specific band set so let's see uh, how our uh, new expression uh, in this particular case for expression string we use uh, this band name alias as you can see here for the near infrared band and the red band as you can see we didn't uh, define the input uh, file path because we are going to use this band set number one and the band set catalog which is the catalog containing the input band set so in this case, we are telling the, uh, the process that we are going to uh, use the bands of the first band set uh, of the catalog and the output path, which is this path here, working directory, uh, slash ndvi virtual dot vrt. And as you can see, we can uh, create a virtual raster as output uh, with this uh, extension dot vrt. The creation of a virtual raster output basically uh, can uh, faster the calculation because uh, it avoids the, uh, the merging of to a single raster TIFF file. And as you can see here, the calculation time is a bit faster than the previous calculation where we created a, a TIFF file from the merging of the single pieces calculated by remote or census parallel processes. So now let's have a look at the Output Manager class of Remote or Census because um, several tools in Remote or Census produce uh, output files and the modules return an object uh, which is an Output Manager object that has uh, several attributes, in particular the attribute check which is true uh, if the output is as expected or false if the process failed the path which is the path of the first output Paths, that is a list of output paths in case of multiple outputs and extra which is an additional output element depending on the process and generally it is a dictionary so we can uh, for instance print the calculation dot path here uh, the calculation is the output object of the previous calculation and we can see here that the attribute path prints the uh, output path of the calculation so now we can also have a look at the NDVI file that we have just calculated here. And as you can see here, we have displayed the calculation of the NDVI. So now we can have a look at another, another tool of the remote or census, which is uh, the reclassification tool. This tool performs the raster reclassification uh, based on a reclassification table. In particular, we are going to reclassify the NDVI we have just calculated based on a threshold, for instance, uh, 0 0.3. And the reclassification table, uh, which is a parameter of this uh, tool, can be a CSV file or a list of uh, lists, uh, such as a list of old value, new value, another old value, new value here, and so on, as you can see here in this example. Uh, we can also use the string raster uh, to, to be used as variable for defining conditional expressions in uh, old value. In particular, we can, for instance, uh, define a raster value lower than 0 0.3. This way, the raster values lower than 0 0.3 uh, will be reclassified as 1. So this is the function, raster reclassification. We have the raster path variable, which is the input uh, file path. In this case, the NDVI calculation path. We define here the output path and, of course, the reclassification table variable, which is, uh, as you can see here, a list of uh, old value, new value defined with this variable raster. So in this case, we are going to define raster minus 0 0.3 as 1 and raster greater or equal than 0 0.3 uh, as class 2. We can click run and after a few seconds the NDVI will be reclassified in two classes. We can have a look at the reclassified raster here. Here as you can see the NDVI is being reclassified and we have uh, basically two colors, uh, black and white, uh, for the class 1 and class 2. 
So we can have a look at another tool, uh, which is a raster report. Uh, raster report allows for the calculation of a report for a raster file, providing information such as the number of pixels in the raster file. So uh, the function is a raster report, and the parameters are raster path, which is uh, this reclassification path that we have just calculated, and the output path, which is basically a report.csv uh, file in which we will find the statistics of the raster. And after a few seconds, we can see here that we have created uh, the report object here. Uh, the report, of course, is a, an output object that we can open through uh, another module of Remote Sensus, which is the Table Manager. And Table Manager allows for opening CSV and DBF file and managing table data as NumPy structured arrays. So basically, with this uh, tool, uh, RS Table Manager and the function Open File, we can open the report uh, path uh, here as input. And we can also define the field names that we uh, are going to, to set for the columns of the uh, raster report. And of course, uh, we already know uh, that uh, the file has four columns, in particular raster value pixel sum, percentage, and area. So if we click uh, uh, Run, and uh, now we can open this uh, table object as a NumPy recurve here. And for instance, we can uh, display the values for each row using this function here. And uh, as you can see, we have printed here uh, the rows of the table. So row zero, which is the uh, input raster value one, and we can see uh, that the value one uh, occupies the 63% of the area of the image. And the second row, which is for raster value two, and we can see here the pixel sum of this value and the percentage of this class. Uh, so table manager also includes functions for field calculation, join and pivot tables. Uh, of course, was, this will be described in detail in other tutorials. Uh, we can also perform uh, a calculation uh, in the table using an expression. For instance, uh, divide uh, the, the area from square meters to hectares. So basically a simple calculation, uh, dividing the area uh, divided by 10,000. And the result will be uh, defined for each row in the output field defined with the output field name variable. So the input for this tool uh, is uh, the matrix, matrix which is the table object here. The expression string here we can see the expression and uh, be and uh, inside quotes the name of the field that we are going to use in this case area divided 10,000 and the output field name uh, in this case uh, we can decide uh, for instance uh, hectares. So if we click run we can perform this calculation and the output, of course, will be uh, a recurve, uh, NumPy recurve, which will include a new field, uh, the hectares field, in which will be calculated, of course, the area in hectares. And the output of this function is calculation. So if we open this object, we can see here, basically, that uh, if we print each row of this uh, table, we can see here that we have a new field hectares, which is a simple calculation from the area divided 10,000. And of course, calculated for each row in the table. We can uh, export the resulting table to a CSV file uh, using this function here, as table manager .export table. Uh, the input is the matrix. Uh, in particular, we are going to use the calculation uh, table that we have just calculated. We define an output path. The fields uh, parameter define uh, which field uh, we want to export. We can define the separator of the field and uh, the se decimal separator with this attribute here. We click run and we have exported the table to a CSV file. So this concludes uh, the uh, examples of this quick start uh, tutorial for of remote or census. The last step is to close the session using this function rs.close. Uh, this is particularly useful because uh, this function removes the temporary files in the temporary directory.
and stops the sub processes. Of course, in other tutorials, we are going to see other tools in details. So thank you for watching.